Welcome to the CBS Radio Mystery Theater Archives, the only YouTube channel which has the original classic episodes of the CBS Radio Mystery Theater in order with no ads. Thank you for listening, and now, enjoy the show. G. Marshall. I have a strange and evil story for you. A story of intrigue and murder. A story of brilliant scheming and double cross. And finally, a shocking surprise. Sound interesting? Philosophers have told us that the desire that remains in the human mind and heart, long after all other desires have turned to ashes, is the lust for money, for gold, for the power it gives. How do you do, sir? May I help you? I wish to arrange for a funeral. I see. Uh, this this coffin is $5,000. Bigger, better, more expensive. Money is no object. No object. And for the funeral? Big, big. 20 cars, flowers, music. Oh, very good, sir. And now, may I ask the name of the deceased? Yes, you may ask. But he is not the deceased. And not the deceased. Not yet. You see, I am to be the corpse. Our mystery drama, Goodbye, Benjamin Flack, was written especially for Mystery Theater by Sidney Sloan and stars Howard Da Silva. It is sponsored in part by all state insurance companies and Buick Motor Division. I'll be back shortly with Act One. Jeffrey Flack took no pleasure in his luncheon meeting with his attorney, Ramsey Powell, at the expensive restaurant, which had been his favorite eating place for many years. He wondered if they would still accept his signature on the check. He was stone broke, and everyone knew it. All his charge accounts had been canceled. His bank had warned him of the dire consequences of writing any more rubber checks. In short... Guthrie Flack had discovered that life was anything but pleasant. How different it had been, he thought, just a few short months before. He worked his way through the diners, ignoring the cold stare of the Metro D, toward the table occupied by Ramsay Powell. Oh, there you are. Sit down, Guthrie. Sit down. Thanks, Ramsay. I'm sorry I'm late. Well, I thought you might not come at all. <laughs> That had occurred to me. It's rather unpleasant to have the welcome mat pulled out from under your feet. <laughs> the look I got from the Mater D froze the blood in my veins. Well, you do owe them quite a tab. Over 4,000, isn't it? Over five. They carried you for a long time. Well, when I had it, I spent a lot here. You spent a lot everywhere. I was going over your accounts this morning. The corporation, of course, is bankrupt. Have you any idea what you owe besides that? I know I can't stop you from telling me. <laughs> well, your personal indebtedness runs into a neat six digits. Uh, $105,074.31. That, that much, huh? And that doesn't include my fee. Or what your ex-wife ran up on farewell presents for herself just before she left the sinking ship. <laughs> sinking ship is right. You're the only friend I've got left. No wife, kids, relatives. Not even a dog. Dora took the poodle with her. <laughs> Good thing. Couldn't even afford the dog food. <laughs> Tell me what you're going to do, Guthrie. Well, my resume. I'm almost 45. I've been a big shot, a wheeler and dealer since I was 23. I made and lost $12 million. And I'm washed up. Ah, oh, nonsense. Utter nonsense. You're still a young and clever man. You can make a comeback. How? With what? I haven't a dime. Oh, that reminds me. Now that the divorce is final, we'll have to change the beneficiary on that life insurance of yours. See, I forgot about that. Two million, isn't it? <laughs> Any cash value there? 
I've been paying the premium for years. Well, I checked into that for you. Let's see. I have the figures here with me. Yes. Yes. Uh, cash value to you, 107000 and some change. Mm. Uh, just about bail me out of my debts. <laughs> well, it's too bad you can't collect on the policy as beneficiary. Yeah, two million. That'd give me the kind of stake I need to make a comeback. <laughs> <laughs> well, stop dreaming. Oh, here comes the waiter to take our order. <laughs> You can't collect on the policy as beneficiary. I made and lost twelve million. Twelve million. Two million to the beneficiary. Two million. I would collect the money if I were dead. How do you do, sir? May I help you? I wish to arrange for a funeral. I see. Now. This coffin is $5,000. Bigger, better, more expensive. Money is no object. No object? May I ask the name of the deceased? Yes, you may. But he is not yet deceased. Not yet? I don't understand. I am to be the corpse. I am preparing for my own funeral. Preparing for my own funeral. Oh. Hello? Hello? Guthrie? H- who is this? Guthrie, are you all right? This is Ramsey Powell. Oh, Ramsey. Why are you trying to sell me a casket? What? What are you saying? <laughs> well, you sound groggy. I don't know quite what I'm saying. I took a couple of sleeping pills. and I had a... A strangest dream. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry to bother you at this hour, but I've been trying to reach you all day. I've been out. We've got to do something about the life insurance. Yes. Yes, I'd like to collect it myself. You're not making any sense, Guthrie. Or maybe I am. I, I had this dream. I was going to... I was going to die. I was preparing for my own funeral... But don't you see, Ramsey? I can collect my own life insurance. I can be my own beneficiary. What do you want? I'm looking for a Benjamin Flack. No one here by that name. Hey, wait, 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 wait. Get your foot out of the door. Wait, please. You're Ben, aren't you? He ain't here left. Ben, I've got to speak to you. I'm your cousin. No, no. Your cousin Guthrie. No. The last time I heard from you was six years ago. You called me and asked me for money, right? You didn't give it to me. I needed it. Look, open the door. I want to talk to you. You got any money with you? Plenty, but not with me. Come in. You got something to drink, can you? No. I'm dying for a drink. I got the shakes. I'll buy you what you want, but you got to listen first. I'll make it fast. How would you like to split two million dollars? You crazy. I'm a wine, you know, a drunk, a black sheep of the family, but I ain't a thief. If you inherited it, would you call that stealing? <laughs> Who's going to leave me that kind of cash? That's almost funny, me inherit. Family wouldn't even admit I existed for the last 10, 15 years. I'm going to leave it to you, Ben. I have a big policy. You're going to be my heir. Two million. You're the only relative I've got. What kind of game are you playing with me? You're a lot healthier than I am. You'll outlive me by 20 years. I don't intend to. I'm going to... going to let them think I'm dead. You as my heir will collect two million, which we will split 50-50. You... You figure you're going to disappear... Play dead, and I'm going to get the big bread, huh? That's right. Well, maybe I'm not very smart, but I know that you've got to be gone for seven years before you are legally dead. Right. And we'd have to wait seven years. I've got plans to take care of that long wait. Plans to shorten it considerably. But first, we're going to put you back on your feet. Get you straightened out, some decent clothing, medical attention. And, by the way... You need a 
dentist. Huh? Need a lot of work on your teeth. Yeah. Yeah, they give me a lot of trouble. Well, that'll be our first step to get your teeth taken care of. You don't realize how important that is. <laughs> Hello? Hello, Ramsey. Guthrie, good Lord, where have you been? I've been trying to reach you. The phone at your apartment was cut off. I had to give up the apartment. Too much rent. Oh, well, where are you? I'm calling from Ferndale. I'm staying in the little shack in the woods. But that belongs to Dora. You gave it to her as an anniversary present the first year you were married. Well, Dora's in Europe. I have a key. She won't like that when she finds out. We won't be here when she gets back. We? My cousin Benjamin is staying with me here. I never knew you had a cousin. You said you had no relatives. Well, our family didn't like to talk about it. Ben never brought much honor to the family name. I see. No, you don't see. I can tell by the way you said that that you're puzzled. Well, as a matter of fact, I am. But having known you all these years, I've come to expect... The unexpected. Uh, yes. Well, you said I needed a new beneficiary for my $2 million insurance policy. I have one. My cousin, Benjamin Flack. I just signed the form, put it in the mail. Hmm. Any objections? No, none. Just what have you got on your mind, Guthrie? On my mind? I don't understand. I think you do. I must warn you that fraud is a very serious crime. Just remember, Ramsey, you are my attorney, and the conversation between attorney and client is privileged... Confidential, not to be repeated. What about the attorney's personal thoughts? I can't keep you from thinking, Ramsey. But your thinking had better not be put into words. Dear Cousin Guthrie. Beautiful day, isn't it? You took your time about getting back here. Well, after the dentist, I felt rotten. I thought he was going to drill right through my jaw. So after you left him, you went looking for a little liquid refreshment. Right. I even had one or two nips to brace me for the pain before I went in. I see. What else did you do in town? Say, uh, that reminds me. Why did I have to give your name to the dentist? Pretend I was you. Did you give him my name? Yeah, because you told me to. Why? Well, you see, my my credit is still good out here. They don't know how broke I am. So? Well, I figured if you used my name, they wouldn't know you and ask for cash. We're a little short of cash, as you know. What about the old car? Why don't we sell that? We need cash. <laughs> it isn't mine. It's Dora's. Uh-huh. Say, uh, you want to know something? What? I just thought of it. You and me look very much alike. Look in the mirror. Come on, stand next to me. Huh? Look. Don't we? Yeah, well, we're about the same age. Oh, six months. I'm almost six months older than you are. Yeah, I remember. Hair yeah, the same color. I've got a little more than you. <laughs> no, you haven't. <laughs> Say, you know, I just remember something. Your mother and my mother, they used to call us the twin cousins when we were kids. I don't remember that. Oh, sure, sure. My mother used to say to me, we're going to visit your twin cousins. She always coined you that. Yeah, well, maybe she did. I don't remember. Oh, she did. She did. They're dead now. All of them dead. Except us. You're getting too gloomy. Stop talking about the dead. Yeah, you're right, Cousin Guthrie. I'm going to cheer me up with a drink. Yep. You and me look very much alike. I notice you're even parting your hair on the right side now. I always parted it on the right. Oh, no, no. You wore it straight back. Uh, straight maybe back. I did. I don't remember. Well, I do. By the way, I've been having a little trouble with a filling in one of my back teeth. A dentist any good? Oh, great. Just great. G R A T E. <laughs> Going to see him yourself? Yeah, I think I'll go tomorrow. Well, who are you going to tell him you are? Me? <laughs> Not a bad idea. I'll be Benjamin Flack, recommended by my cousin, Guthrie Flack. 
Yeah. You know, somehow or other, I don't like the sound of that. <laughs> it's all part of the plan, Ben. You're going to collect two million dollars. When you're dead. When they think I'm dead. How are you going to make them think you're dead? I don't know yet. You still have to work that out. You got to find a body to have real proof. You know what I think? No, what do you think? I think you already have that all worked out. <laughs> I wish I did. What if you became me? Like you're trying already. Changing the way you comb your hair. No, no, no. Don't talk nonsense. Nonsense, huh? Look, you become me, Ben Flack. I become you. Now I'm Guthrie Flack. And I died. So you, you're now Ben Flack. You collect your own insurance. And I get nothing. You know why? I'm dead. You killed me. Do you think I... For two million bucks... Oh, yeah. So would I. You've got it all figured out. And I should have guessed it from the beginning. Cousin, I was slated to become the corpse to get you the insurance money. That's very clever of you to work it all out. What are you going to do now? Yell for the police? Oh, no, no. Cousin, we're going to go ahead with your plan. But with different results. Ah, you are going to be the jet one. Ben, ben stop. Stop. I'll kill you. No, no you won't. Oh. 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 Ben. Ben, good Lord. I killed him. I killed him. So Guthrie Flack's diabolic plan succeeded. The one item in his deliberations that had made him hesitate was now accomplished. He had to murder his cousin so he could assume his cousin's identity and collect his own insurance. But is the road ahead open and clear of all obstacles? What will Guthrie Flack discover when he tries to put his hands on his insurance money? I will return in a moment with Act Two. Guthrie Flack, in a cool, orderly way, set about establishing the accident that was to be reported to the police. He exchanged clothes with his dead cousin, careful to leave all of his, Guthrie's, identification in the pockets of the dead man. Then, putting Ben's body in the old car, he drove to a spot on the edge of a steep embankment, set the car in drive with the dead man at the wheel. With a stick, he jammed the gas and sent the car crashing. Police, I just witnessed an accident. I was driving on Route 43B about 10 minutes ago. I saw this car ahead of me weaving all over the road. Man must have been sick or drunk. Then he crashed through the guardrail. Car went down an embankment and exploded. I couldn't do anything for him. I, I called as soon as, as soon as I could get to a phone. Just a minute. Police. Anything wrong, officer? Well, there's been a bad accident. A man killed. The car was traced... Killed? And burned in the crash. We were able to find some identification. Do you know a Guthrie Flack? Guthrie? He's my cousin. Your name? Ben. Uh, uh, Benjamin Flack. I was staying with him here. I see. Well, would you mind coming with me to make identification? No. Well, no. So as soon as I get my clothes on here, I've been asleep. <laughs> Mr. Ramsey Powell? Yes. Uh, come in, Mr. Flack. Benjamin Flack. Um, <clears throat> sit down. Sit down, Mr. Flack. Pardon me for staring. You, you look so much like your late cousin. Yeah. We used to be called a twin cousin. Actually, I'm somewhat older than my cousin was. Unbelievable. You're so much like him. Oh, yeah. You wrote that you wanted to see me, Mr. Ramsey. Uh, Powell. My first name is Ramsey. Oh. 
Yes, I am the executor of your late cousin's estate. You're his only heir. Estate? I thought he was broke. That's what he told me. He said he lost everything and he owed money. Well, that is correct. His estate owes over $100,000. Well, I sure don't want to inherit his debts. So if you don't mind, I'll be uh, going. Well, there is an insurance policy. You are the beneficiary. Oh, how much? Two million. Two, two million? My congratulations. You're a very lucky man, Benjamin Flack. <laughs> Mr. Flack, Mr. Benjamin Flack. Yeah, that's right. May I introduce myself? I'm Gloria Danners. I'm an investigator for 50 States Insurance Company. Oh, yeah. You're the young lady who called yesterday, aren't you? Yes. May I come in? Please. Sit down, won't you? I prefer to stand, thank you. I, I don't have much to ask you. The, um, the late Guthrie Flack was your cousin? Uh, first cousin on my father's side, yeah. I understand you'd not seen each other for many years. That's right. He wasn't very friendly to you. No. As a matter of fact, no one in the family cared for me. I was the I was the black sheep, so to speak. Something of a drunk, I suppose. Well, I, I, I didn't intend to... Em embarrass me? <laughs> I'm sure you knew all about me. <laughs> well, you, you must understand that the questions I'm asking are just routine. Well, why are you asking them, then, Miss... Uh... Danners. Gloria Danners. Ah, I've got a great idea, Miss Danners. Why don't we go out, find a nice, quiet place where the food is good, and there you can ask me all about the unsavory story of my life. What do you say? Well, I... If you don't come, the interview ends right now. Well, now that we've ordered our dinner... I'll give you just 30 seconds to ask me the rest of your routine questions. 30 seconds? Did I show you the list requested by the company? No, and don't do it now and spoil my appetite. You must answer them, Mr. Flack. You want to collect the money, don't you? Very badly. I'm tired of rubbing a nickel and a dime together in my pocket. Perhaps it was a mistake taking me to a place like this. It must be very expensive. Uh, oh, 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 I had a little money stashed away, hidden from my creditors, I mean. Creditors? Oh, well, everyone has creditors, especially heavy drinkers like me. I think your drinking is quite moderate, Mr. Flack. One cocktail since we've been here? Well, I've decided that since I'm going to be a very rich man, I'd stop trying to ruin my liver. Oh, well, now that I have something to live for. The inheritance. Yeah. Any question? Am I not getting it? No, none that I can think of. But if you didn't get it... Why should I not get it? My cousin Guthrie died. I was his beneficiary, so his insurance goes to me. No, you, you misunderstand. I was merely asking, what would happen to you if you didn't get it? Happen? It would be the end of the world for me, Mrs. Danner's. My married name isn't Danners, Mr. Flack. I took my maiden name back. Oh. Well, I've got a good idea now how we can avoid the formality of this insurance business of yours. My name is Benjamin. My friends call me Ben. According to your card, your name is Gloria. May I call you that? <laughs> of course, Ben. Well, come in, Mr. Flack. Uh, sit down, won't you? Sure, Ramsey. I mean, uh, Mr. Powell. <laughs> Confusing when you got a name like that. First name and last name sounding like the last name. Uh, you know what I mean? Yes. Common mistake. You may call me Ramsey if you like. Your late cousin Guthrie did. You, uh, worked for... Uh, I mean, you know Guthrie for quite a while, huh? Mm, period of over 20 years. Uh, he was more than a client to me. I thought of him as my friend. Yeah, I can imagine. I miss him, Mr. Flack. Your cousin was a very interesting man with a very exciting imagination. Yeah? I didn't know him too well when he was way up there. I only got to know him the last few weeks of his life. Do you know why he sought you out, Mr. Flack? No. I hadn't seen him for five, six years, and then... Uh, please. Why don't we drop all this nonsense? This play-acting, Guthrie? What? What'd you, what'd you call me? I called you Guthrie. Oh, yeah. 
Yeah, we do. We do look alike. Huh? Yes, I know. Twin cousins. Well, l- let's drop all that, Guthrie. You told me too much about your plans to think you can fool me now. I don't understand you, Mr. Powell. I think I'll go now. Very well, if you're intent on continuing this charade... A good day, Mr. Powell. Uh, Wait. Shut that door unless you want my secretary to hear what I'm going to say. Go on. I want you to know that the insurance company is not going to be too easy to manage. Two million dollars is a lot of money. I'm not going to hand over that kind of money without an investigation in depth. Well? They've had an autopsy performed on the body of the uh, victim. What did they find? Not very much. When the car crashed over the embankment and burned, most identifiable characteristics of the dead man were obliterated. Then they can't prove who the dead man was. Uh, They have one solid proof. Only the man's teeth gave any clue to his identity. Don't you think that fortunate? And it was Guthrie Flack. It was Guthrie Flack. Or so the dentist who had worked on the victim just the day before the accident testified at the coroner's inquest. Well? I don't believe the dentist was correct. You think he was bought off? No. No, I think he was deceived. By a very clever man. You. Mr. Powell, I'm doing my best to control my temper and answer your accusations. First, I would like to point out that Guthrie owed you a considerable amount of money, right? Yes. What's that got to do with the question in hand? A great deal. If I am really Guthrie, then the dead man is Ben. Do you follow? Go on. Guthrie, if he is alive, has no market value. He's broke. He owes over 100000 right? That's correct. I am Benjamin Flack, Mr. Powell. I, as the beneficiary of my cousin's policy, intend to pay all his debts in full. All his legal fees and obligations. Is this in the nature of a bribe? Just a statement of my intentions, Mr. Powell. Yes. I'm an old man. I've I've done very well in my profession. I don't need any more money. I have no use for it. If you think you can influence me... Damn it, Powell. I'm still young. I want to live. I want the things money can buy, and I want the money. And no one... No one is going to stop me. It's truly amazing, Mr. Flack. What is? The way you resemble the late Guthrie Flack... You've even taken over his manner, his drive, his arrogance, his ego. If you are in truth Benjamin Flack, there's been the most incredible transference of character. And what are you going to do, Mr. Powell? I don't quite know. I shall have to take the matter up with my conscience. I would advise you to do the same. Conscience? Does a man like Guthrie Flack have a conscience? There can be no doubt in his mind that Ramsey Powell sees through the deception. What does a man in his dilemma do? Does he confess? Does he run? Be assured, Guthrie will not confess and he will not run. It isn't in his nature to surrender. I'll be back in a moment with Act Three. Guthrie Flack's well-laid plans are beginning to come apart. He is still relying on his old friendship with Ramsey Powell to keep him from talking. Also, he has another ace up his sleeve, the rule of confidentiality between attorney and client. He is also depending on this ancient law to protect him, to prevent Ramsey from going to the police. Penny, for your thoughts, Ben. Hmm? Well, ever since I got into the car, you've dropped into a deep hole. Not a word. I'm sorry, Gloria. I don't mean to be rude. When you called me and asked me to go out with you, you sounded worried. Is something bothering you? No. Well, yes. I had a little argument today, this afternoon, with my attorney. Something to do with the insurance? Well, yes, in a way. You see, I'm getting a bit strapped for funds. I've been living a little higher than I should since... uh, 
since I found out about the inheritance. Then your argument was about money, hmm? Well, not quite an argument, but it was about money. Perhaps I can help. How? Perhaps I can persuade the company to advance you some on account. You could? Well, I can try. If they would be willing to do that, it would mean that they were satisfied that everything was okay with my claim. Um, not exactly. What does that mean? Well, they were trying to contact Guthrie Flack's wife. Ex-wife? They were divorced. She has no claim on the policy. She was dropped as beneficiary at the time, replaced by me. And the company thinks she may want to contest it in the courts. Say that you put undue stress on Guthrie Flack to get him to name you as his heir. Oh, that's a lot of malarkey, Gloria. The divorce was final. She can still go to the law. Well, let her. She hasn't got a leg to stand on. No, I, I agree with you. You do? Mm-hmm. The form to change the beneficiaries in perfect order, notarized, and the signature attested to by Mr. Powell. So they're dropping that idea of bringing her back, huh? Well, I haven't definitely said so, but I think they will. And the road is clear. No obstacles. And I have you to thank for it, Gloria. Oh, I was only doing my job then. It's my duty as an employee of 50 States Insurance to see that claims get processed quickly and economically. It would cost quite a bit to bring Guthrie Flack's ex-wife back. And actually, what she wants to do about the matter legally is her own personal problem. Not the company's. Definitely. However, there is something else they want from you. More proof that you really are the man you say you are. Proof? I've produced papers, documents. Not much, but it's it's all I've got. They want Benjamin Flack's fingerprints. Fingerprints? Well, surely you must have some official record of your fingerprints. No, no, I, I don't. I was never in the service, refused for medical reasons, uh, never in the government job, never had... Well, never arrested for anything more serious than drunkenness. Well, you might have difficulty in establishing your identity. Mr. Powell, your attorney, assured the company that you could produce fingerprints. How could he say that? He doesn't know. Well, don't be angry with me, Ben. I, I'm, I'm, I'm not. I'm, I'm sorry, Gloria. There's, um... There's something else you should know. What? Your wife, Mrs. Benjamin Flack, has been found. Your estranged wife. Wife? She is coming back here to identify you. Coming back? Whose idea was that? Yours? Oh, it was your attorney who suggested it. Ramsey Powell. He said he thought it would be the quickest way to bring matters to a conclusion. And I think he's right. Don't you, Ben? I've been on this phone trying to reach him for two days. When will he be back? Well, how ill is he? This is important. I'm a client of his. A serious matter has come up, and I must... Yes, I've tried him at home, but his servant or nurse or whatever tells me that he can't speak to me. Well, I'm sorry to have taken up so much of your valuable time. Henry! Henry! Oh, dear. He said he was going out for a while. All right, it's all right. I'm coming. I'm coming. I've been trying to reach you for two days, Ramsey. Oh, Mr. Flack, I I'm sorry, but I I'm not well enough to talk to you. You damn well better make the effort. I've got to talk to you. Uh, I've been ill, qu quite ill, my heart. You've really decided to cut me down, haven't you? I, I don't know what you mean. It was your suggestion to have Mrs. Benjamin Flack brought here to identify me. I, I thought it would expedite matters. You thought it would put the finish to my plans. That's what you wanted to do. As my attorney, you couldn't accuse me. You couldn't violate the confidentiality of client and attorney. But you could get me by bringing her here to identify me. Mr. Flack... Why should having your estranged wife here upset your plans? Okay, Ramsey, let's cut out the pretense. You know I'm Guthrie. You've known it all along. Yes. You know what'll happen when Ben Fleck's wife sees me? Yes. What is the old expression? The jig will be up. Well, you're going to keep that from happening. How? Oh, they've already sent for her. You're going to say that I am really Ben Flack, no matter what she says. I can't help you, Guthrie. 
You've committed murder. Cold-blooded, premeditated murder. And for what? For money. No, no, you, you, you got it wrong. It was self-defense. Well, however it happened, you committed murder. You planned to kill him. And you succeeded. If you turn away from me, Ramsey, I'm finished. What can I do? Well, if you can pray, if you have a God, pray for forgiveness. No, listen, Ramsey, please. You've got to help me. For all the years we've known each other. For all the years. But actually, Guthrie, I haven't really known you at all. Not at all. You're not the man I... I have... Oh, my heart. Guthrie, the pills. In the top drawer of that desk. Get them quickly. This what you mean? Yes. Give them to me. If I do... Guthrie, please. I, I can't bargain with you. I'm dying. Please give me the pills. Get them yourself. Come in, Ben. Your secretary told me to go right in. Yes. Um, she's here, your wife. So she's here? Mm-hmm. I don't really care... Well, I mean, it's going to be a bit awkward. Oh, not at all. It's a simple matter. She identifies you as Benjamin Flack, and the company pays you the money. Well, what, what if... What if, I mean, what if she doesn't make positive identification? Well, why shouldn't she, Ben? A wife should be able to say almost immediately... Well, it's been five years, Gloria. A person changes in five years. Ages, hair turns. Well, I'm going to send her in alone. You, you two must have a lot to say to each other after all that time. If you still want to stay together, all well and good. If not, you must make arrangements. When you're ready for me, I'll come back and we can get the business end finalized in minutes. Okay? I I guess so. I'll, um, I'll send her in. Hello, Ben. Gloria, you're back. What happened? Where is she? Well, she's here. Look at me, Ben. Don't you recognize me? No, you're Gloria Danners from the... Well, what is this, a game? I didn't tell you my married name, did I? It's Mrs. Benjamin Flack. No. It's a lie, a trick. This has all been set up to trap me. You trapped yourself. You never really knew Ben's wife. And that's who I am. I'm getting out of here. I'll see my lawyer. He'll Your lawyer is dead, Guthrie. Didn't you see the papers this morning? Okay, Gloria. You outfoxed me. You're a clever woman. Very clever. But I would like to point out a few facts that I think will make sense to you. Does this concern me? It does. Let's have it. Ben is dead. You killed him. In self-defense. But what difference does that make? I couldn't prove it. Now I am Ben Flack. I have assumed his identity, and we'll get the two million insurance money. You said it concerned me. Half of that is yours, Gloria. I will give you a paper assigning half to you. If? If you definitely identify me as Benjamin Flack. And if I say no, that you are Guthrie Flack, masquerading as my husband, whom you have murdered. Then I shall go to trial for his murder, be convicted, it's an open and shut case, and spend the rest of my life behind bars. Well? But you're too smart to do that, Gloria. Why? Because the entire two million will be lost to me and to you. Now, well, here's the deal. If you say I am Ben, if you identify me as Ben, you will get one million dollars. Just a simple direct sentence. Yes, that is my husband, Benjamin Flack, the beneficiary of the late Guthrie Flack. You have it all worked out, and quickly, too. I can see how you made all your money. And lost it, Gloria. This is my last chance to get back. And it means a, a life of ease, of luxury for you. A million dollars for you. No deal, Guthrie. You'd throw away a million? Yes. Because I want it all. I won't share. But, but you can't get it. If you refuse me, if you intend to expose me as a fraud... A murderer, you won't get anything. Guthrie Flack will still be alive, therefore, no beneficiary. No, you are wrong. 
I will identify you as Ben. And you will give me all the inheritance. And do you know why? You'll turn me in if I don't. So what? It's your word against mine. No, my side is stronger. The insurance company knows I am Mrs. Benjamin Flack. That's why they hired me. To find out if you were an imposter. And what's more, I've just recorded our entire conversation, just for my own protection. Very incriminating. Oh, uh, Recorded? So, if I use the tape, you will stand trial for murder. I shall not use the tape unless you force me to. I see. Just one more thing before I positively identify you as Ben Flack. This paper. It turns the entire inheritance over to me. Would you please sign it? Do I have a choice now? None. And now, goodbye, Benjamin Flack. The tables have been turned. The cheaters have been cheated. Guthrie's punishment is to him even greater than if a court of law had sentenced him to life imprisonment. It is not in his nature to accept defeat and poverty. And that is all he has. In the final analysis, Guthrie Flack actually killed himself. Guthrie is officially dead, and a Ben Flack in his body haunts the streets of Skid Row asking for a handout. I'll be back in a moment. One last word about our story. What now happens to Gloria? Is the two million she will receive free from sweaty sordidness? After all, she was also guilty of perpetrating a fraud. Ramsey Powell told Guthrie to consult his conscience. Perhaps a bit of soul-searching might change Gloria. But that is another story. Our cast included Howard Da Silva, Joan Lovejoy, Court Benson, and Ralph Bell. The entire production was under the direction of Hyman Brown. And now, a preview of our next tale. With envy and anger, an evil spirit endured the din of revel until the fiend of hell, Grendel the monster mighty, in moorland living, in fen and fastness, stirred. Who is Grendel Dash? The monster child of the sea hag, hater of Beowulf and his thanes. I know. But who is Grendel now? Who is the monster you he dream of? He is a demon, full of hate, waiting to spring upon the innocent. Who is he in your life? He is... No one... He cannot be. He is no. Radio Mystery Theater was sponsored in part by True Value Hardware Stores and Luden's Medicated Cough Drops. This is E.G. Marshall inviting you to return to our mystery theater for another adventure in the macabre. Until next time, pleasant dreams.